Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, live at the SSC Live TV studios with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining me this week. And this week, we will move into an area of the church and an important critical social issue that our nation is facing, especially the black community. And that is the issue of violence. Violence, the church and urban violence. What are the causes of so much violence that has erupted in many of our major cities? And more importantly, what are the cures? What are the causes and what are the cures? And we're going to look at the Word of God because the Word of God applies to every situation and every circumstance that we find ourselves in. There is a word or true life situations that we experience, including the issue of violence. So our focus will be on what can we do about it? What can the righteous do? That's a question that's being asked in Psalm 11. And Psalm 11 is a psalm about violence. And the writer is asking, what can we do about the violence and the death, the, the homicide uh, that is taking place? Look at Psalm 11 and what it says. I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird? Stop here. Fly like a bird to the mountains for safety. So there's a lot of violence, and people are saying, look, you need to move away from where the violence is taking place. Fly like a bird to the mountains. The mountains is to fly to the suburbs. Fly to a more affluent neighborhood. Verse 2 reads, the wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows. So that's the bow and arrows, the equivalent of a pistol. Everybody's packing. So they're packing bows and arrows, and they are low. Notice it says bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. Fitting the arrows means they are putting bullets in the chambers. So they put the arrow on the bowstring. They shoot from the shadows. So this is a drive-by. <laughs> they drive-by. Shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. The foundations of law and order. You've heard that phrase, law and order. Nixon used it. Uh, George Wallace used it. Trump used it. We need law and order. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What? Here's the question. In the midst of all the violence, what can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. And again, the writer asks the question in verse 3, what can the righteous do about the violence? Imagine at 2 o'clock in the morning that some burglars go into a department store. They break into the department store. But they don't break into the department store in order to steal something. They break into the department store in order to, to for a prank, to, to confuse people. Because what they do in the department store, instead of stealing things, they go around and they switch the price tags on items. And what they do is, so they take something that is inexpensive, like a pair of socks, let's say it costs $5, and then they'll put the pair of socks which is $5 on a flat screen TV, which is worth $500. And they take the price tag off the flat screen TV, which is $500, and they put it on a pair of socks, uh, which is really only $5. So when somebody picks up the socks and says, oh my God, this is $500? And then they look at the flat screen TV and say, oh my God, this is only uh, $500? Well, what happened is someone has switched the price tag the burglars switched the price tags so that the expensive things have been cheapened and the cheap things become expensive. In a sense, that is what has happened to our world. Someone has come into our world, and you know who that someone is. The someone is Satan, who has come into our world, and he, Satan has switched the price tag so that expensive things have been cheapened, and cheap things have value. Things that are not important really have value. You can see how he's switched the price tag as it relates to human life. 
there is nothing more sacred than human life because God created human life. And not only did God create human life, God made us in God's image. It's what's called imagio dei, the image of God. We reflect the image of God. What distinguishes Christianity perhaps from other religions is simply this. In other religions, something that is considered sacred may be a building. It may be the Ganges River. It may be a temple or a mosque. But for Christians, what is sacred is not buildings, not rivers, uh, not a city like the holy city of Mecca. What is sacred from the Christian perspective is Jesus. Nothing is more sacred than human life. And nothing is more sinful than the desecration of the ending of human life. And this is what's going on in Psalm 11. There is violence. People are shooting bows, killing innocent people, shooting bows, I mean arrows from bows, killing innocent people in the shadows. And there is an epidemic of violence that's taking place in this text, so much so that one man who is living in the midst of the violence, his friends are saying, look, you need to move out of here. You need to flee like a bird. But he says, I'm not fleeing because I trust God. And while he is trusting God, it still does not remedy the fact that there is violence. So he asks the question, what can the righteous do? In fact, in verse 3, notice again what he says in verse, the foundations of law and order. What are foundations? Well, a building is built first on a foundation. You don't just build a building. It has to be, you have to have footers and a foundation. Then you build up on the foundation because without the foundation, the building can't survive. It collapses. And our community is built on certain principles that are foundational to community life. And one of the important foundations is the belief that all life is sacred. The writer says the foundations of law and order have collapsed. What do you do when there's no foundation? What can the righteous do when there's no foundation? In my own city of Louisville, and this is high in proportion to our population. But last year in 2020, we had the largest record of homicides in the history of our city, predominantly black American descendants of slavery males, 117. Already this year, 79 homicides, which means at that rate, we could easily be up to 160 homicides. And I'm just talking about Louisville. If you think about other communities like Chicago, the, the homicide rate. I uh, received a phone call uh, just yesterday from a woman who was a member of our congregation asking for prayer because her 21-year-old grandson was shot in the head. The recent homicide here in our city was a 15-year-old boy who was just killed, 15 years old. What should the righteous do? Let me say this, that no one um, celebrates the death, the snuffing out of black life like the Ku Klux Klan. In fact, the Ku Klux Klan once sent a mockery letter uh, to, which read this, KKK thanks you gangbangers. I'm writing in regards to a letter I saw in Chicago uh, and felt it, it should be read by all African Americans especially, so it tells uh, 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 what, uh, why the person sent the letter. It says, a salute to all gangbangers. The Ku Klux Klan would like to take this time to salute and congratulate all gangbangers for slaughter of over 4,000 black people since 1975. You're doing a marvelous job. Keep killing each other's for nothing. The streets are still not yours, niggas. It is ours. You're killing each other for our property. You're killing what could be the future doctors, lawyers, businessmen, and we won't have to compete with, which is what, by the way, racism is all about, competition for resources and power. We won't have to compete with you because you're going to 
wipe yourself out. The good thing about it is that you are killing the youth. So now we won't have to worry about you niggas in generations to come. We further like to thank all the judges who have over sentenced those niggas in prison. We are winning again. Pretty soon we'll be able to go back to raping your women because all the men will be gone. Go, you gangbangers. Keep up the good work. We love to read about drive-by shootings. We love to hear how many niggas get killed over the weekend. We can tolerate the niggas with jungle fever for now because the further, that further breaks down your race. To all gangbangers across the world, we don't love you niggas, but we appreciate you gangbangers. You're doing a wonderful job uh, eliminating the black race. Without the men, you women can't reproduce, unless, of course, we do it for them. Then we will have successfully eliminated race thanks to your help and commitment to killing each other. If most of you gangbangers cannot read this letter, it's okay. Go pull a trigger and kill a nigga. Thank you. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? And this week, our focus will be on the causes because the Ku Klux Klan have oversimplified what the problem really is. We're going to look at the causes, but more importantly, we're going to look at the cures so that by the end of the week, that devil who has come into our world and has switched the price tag, we're going to rearrange the price tag so that human life is what is considered sacred, especially black life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Bless your people and help us never to give up hope uh, that you are still in control. Uh, help us, O oh Lord, to bring sanity to our mean world where price tags have been altered. Lord, bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, contact us here at St. Stephen Church. Everybody needs a church home, Christian fellowship, membership. We talked about that last week. You need that. So contact us. We'll get right back with you. Uh, new Start, that's our email, newstart at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you, and I hope you have a blessed day. And until we meet again on tomorrow, don't forget that during COVID-19, stay safe. Stay sane and never forget God is in control. I'll see you tomorrow.